Okay, this is old Cam. And this is not a spring check. And today we're going to be continuing our conversation on various Christmas songs, or Christmas music, and their history. Yeah, today we're going to start off with a real winner. This one we know was made for Christmas. You know why? Why? Is Christmas in its title? The 12 Days of Christmas. Oh, yes. Basically, it enumerates a series of increasingly grand gifts given on each day of the 12 days of Christmas. Textual evidence suggests the song first published in England in 1780 may uh, be French in origin. Origin? Which, uh, origin. I, I, I'm a southerner, so mm -hmm. I tend to say it has a, it has a, a round folk song index number of 86. Mm -hmm. It can be, I don't know if it can be French or not, but mm -hmm. I can tie it. I never can understand why they could not do it. People have so much problem doing these like that, Alex. The 12 days of song and the 12 days starting Christmas Day are in tradition the day after Christmas, which is Boxing Day. Remember the English are weird. What, what is this? I don't know about Boxing. What's well, Boxing Day? It's basically, it's, um, I think it's the day when uh, employers take the job with employees. Oh. Yeah. The twelfth night is defined. Uh, uh, we see, we see the twenty, uh, being a, a feast day of uh, Saint Stephen, the day before Epiphany, or the feast of Epiphany, which is January sixth, is the twelfth day. It means it starts the twelfth day starts the twenty sixth and goes afterwards, which is technically it's not a Christmas song after all. It's the twelve days after Christmas. Mm. Um, basically, although the specific and original chance run known as it possibly began as a twelfth night memories and forfeits game, which the leader called a verse and the player repeated the verse, the leader added another verse. Well, I know I've heard this done before. Well, basically, on the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me and a gold watch mm -hmm. and a diamond ring and a diamond necklace. Which they well, they sit there and change. They change five golden rings. Yeah. Well, but, actually, you know, this is one of those things that we could sit there and change with um, donations. Yeah. So mm. something. Look at that. You believe that just happened? What happened? It just. Um, oh no! Your screen. My screen. There oh, go. there it goes. I know. I don't know what the hell happened. But it just, um, you know, that's, that's called life, folks. It just changed on me. Okay, um, the basically here, you know, uh, it, the, the time signature song is not constant, like most popular music, because basically it's not required to sing. As you've, you've heard us do the 12 Days of Christmas, Monty's 12 Days of Christmas for like five years. You can tell it's, doesn't, it's not constant. Mm -hmm. We've really done strange things to that. Uh, basically, it goes from three quarter bar per gift to four quarter bar per gift, per four four per gift. The second verse the melody is different than the fifth, so that basically the melody is not the same, folks. You change the melody as you go along, so it's probably mm -hmm. what we have wrong. Mm -hmm. There are as many variations of the song as there are days in the year. Ooh. The the last four objectives are raised in a different mode. The uh, the, you know, the earliest uh, attested version of Chant in England appears in the Oxford Dictionary of Nursery Rhymes, which means it's not a Christmas song, it's an after Christmas. I thought it would have been a Christmas song. It's not, it's in the children's nursery rhyme. Even though it's uh, 12 days of Christmas? It's after the 12th, it's after Christmas, and it's a children's rhyme. Children's uh, nursery rhyme? Basically, it also, you have original dialect, variation crept in the English language from the French, and basically, uh, in the west of France, the piece is known as La Foire de la, de la um, in Scotland, the king sent his lady on the first Yule day. Uh, in Australia, the most common version is the traditional English version. How a number of the uh, alternate versions have been created to make it their own. Uh, you have in the 19th century, most sources of lyrics do not include music, and those that do often include music different from what we know for today. So I mean, you, um, they say. Basically, an English composer in 1909, Frederick Austin, wrote the arrangement, which is commonly used today. Uh, but, uh, oh, here's one, though. I like this one. Um, they're talking about the meanings of the word, okay. Here's, uh, here's regard, this is what people think the meaning is. Uh, a partridge in a pear tree, mm -hmm. it means Jesus. Two turtle doves, the Old and New Testament. Oh, interesting. Three French hens, the three kings three, three bearing kings yeah. Four calling birds, the four gospels. Five golden rings, the Torah, our peninsula, the first five books of the Old Testament. Oh, interesting. Six geese of flying, the six days of creation. 
Six geese a Six geese a laying. Six geese a laying. Oh, well, you know what? It does have to do with creation because you're laying eggs for mm -hmm. the rebirth. Seven swans are swimming, the seven gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, oh. Eight maids are milking, the eight beatitudes. Nine ladies dancing, the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Ten lords are leaping, the ten commandments. Eight pipers piping, or eleven, the pipers. eleven pipers piping, the eleven faithful apostles, and the twelfth drummer drumming, the twelve points of the Apostles' Creed. Now, are they... Is it is this real? The real symbolism? No, that's what they, that is space. what the uh, that is what is thought to be, what it actually means. Isn't that something? Isn't that that makes sense. So uh, I have to go back. Based on who originally wrote it. Yeah. Okay. What happened to the twelfth? You know what it is? I lost uh, when that thing when it zapped on me. I lost the twelve days of Christmas. Oh, I bet we can remember that. So no, uh, let me go. A partridge in a pear tree. In a file. Close and I'm going to reopen it and don't save because mm -hmm. what happened was I lost it. There we go. There we get the lyrics. Here we go. This is simple because we, we, we butchered this. We butchered it for five years, so we get to be the sixth one now. So. Oh, is that what it is? On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me a partridge in a pear tree. On the second day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Two turtle doves and a partridge in a pear tree. On the third day of Christmas, my true love gave to me three, three Francians, two, two turtle, turtle doves, and a partridge in a pear tree. tree. On the fourth day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. What is We that? jumped to the twelfth day of Christmas. What? No, because it said it is repeated on the twelfth day of Christmas. My true love gave to me. Twelve, Twelve drummers drumming, eleven pipers piping, ten lords a leaping, ten lords a leaping, nine ladies dancing, eight, eight maids a milking, seven swans a swimming, six geese a laying, five, five gold golden rings, four <laughs> collie birds, three French hens, two turtle doves, and a partridge in a, a pear tree. I know, isn't that neat? That's we got a whole different plan on it this year. They just dumped it because there's no reason to go any further. So mm -hmm. I got to really work on this one because when it dumped it, it changed everything on me. That's what happens with computers, folks. We had a, here we come, this one. Oh, come, oh, ye faithful. <laughs> oh, da, 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 da. Basically, here's a here's what it called. Is this one isn't a Christmas song? It's not. No, what happened again? Uh, basically, it jumped on me again. The business is a Dennis Fiatus is a hymn. The tune itself has unclear. Oh yeah, the Latin version. Yeah. Yeah. The, the text itself has unclear beginnings and may have been written in the 13th century by John of Reading. So those included in John Francis Way, he's probably the author. The original four verses of the hymn were extended to a total of eight, and those have become translated in many languages. Um, the English translation of O Come All You Faithful by the Catholic priest Frederick Oakley is widespread in English, most English speaking countries. Uh, the earliest existing manuscripts granting scriptural birth words and tune, John Francis Wade included in his own publication of Contest de Versailles in 1751. Mm -hmm. uh, also published again in 1760. So um, basically, uh, we got uh, commonly used and accepted lyrics are in English, which is we'll go to this one because there's not a whole lot known about this song because you can't find any more information than that. That's it. Because no one knows where it came from, and really no one knows who wrote it, and they've never touched it. Nobody screwed with this oh, song because so why it's, is that? It's a church hymn. Oh. <clears throat> Other than the fact that people will sing it differently, but um, we go to. <clears throat> O come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant, O come ye, O come ye to Bethlehem. Come and behold him, born the King of angels. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. O come, let us adore him. Christ the Lord. 
for another seven verses of the same thing. But basically, it becomes an Adelis Fidalis, let us triumphus, Vante Venti a Bethlehem, Natum Vite Regem Adorum, Vite Adultus Dominium. That's, I actually did learn to speak Latin when I was a young child. So. Mm -hmm. Um, there, okay, um, text, wait, wait, okay, here we're gonna go, we'll go down a little bit more. Um, basically, the original text is from time to time attributed to various groups and individuals. Um, Saint, from, from St. Bonaventure, can you imagine that all the way? St. Bonaventure? Yeah. There's a Bonaventure Hotel in Dublin, Yeah, Los so, uh, but basically, I mean, this is, I mean, the thing, basically, most of, a lot of people sing it and make it their own. It has a tendency to, um, uh, they, they think it was written by the order of monks too. It, 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 it's, it's something that is so really screwed up. King John the Fourth had something to change. Basically a Jacobean connection. And performance verses are often, okay, most of the verses are changed uh, uh, other than the first section is all that's basically ever sang. Mm -hmm. And the rest of it is totally ignored because mostly, mostly they became, <clears throat> because the big guys, Oh, come, all ye faithful, joyful and triumphant. They guys with the big voices really like to go, and they don't go to the next part because what happens is they blow their voices in the first stanza. So, but um, basically, uh, it, actually, it's been changed clean up until 1912. I mean, 2012. People have horsed around with it, but next one we get to do the next one, which is Jolly Old St. Nicholas is a Christmas song. Uh, its authorship is often credited to, to Wiff Carter. However, since the song is mentioned in earlier works such as Susan Gray's Christmas Orphans, this attribution is unlikely. The song has also been credited to Benjamin Handy, author of Pop Up the House Top. Pop Up the House Top. You know, the song traditionally performed in a melody originally written by James Lloyd Pierpoint again, uh, of which the uh, which he used the original version of Jingle Bells. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jolly, oh, Jolly Old St. Nicholas. Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle All the Way. Jolly Old St. Nicholas, that's it. Traditional lyrics are... Jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Jolly old Saint Nicholas. Ah, there it is. Then you're in. Jolly, jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Jolly old Saint Nicholas, lean your ear this way. Don't you tell a single soul what I'm going to say. Christmas Eve is coming soon. Now you dear, now you dear old man, whisper what you'll bring to me. Tell me what you can. When the clock is striking twelve, when I'm fast asleep. Down the chimney, broad and black, with your pack you'll creep. All the stockings you will find hanging in a row. Mine will be the shortest one, you're sure to know. Johnny wants a pair of skates, Susie wants a dolly. Nellie wants a storybook, she thinks dolls are folly. As for me, my little brain isn't very bright. Just for me, oh Saint Santa Claus, what do you think? That, think, um, that's, it's, it's bloody Jolly Old St. Nicholas, it's Jingle Bells. See, I didn't know that before. That's a total one. Okay, then the... I know. The last verse has been changed in the 20th century to... Johnny, Jingle Bells, Jingle Bells, Jingle all the way. Johnny wants a pair of skates, Susie wants a sled. Nelly wants a storybook, one she hasn't read. As for me, I hardly know, so I'll go to rest. Just for me, dear Santa Claus, is what you think is best. See, mm -hmm. and then we got another, we got another variation. Johnny wants a pair of skates. Susie wants a sled. Nellie wants a picture book, yellow, blue, and red. Now I think I'll leave to you what to give the rest. Choose for me, dear Santa Claus. You will know the best. Isn't that neat? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't realize that there were jingle bells. Neither did I. But if you no, but you dropped the first. Okay, here's where we dropped the, the first bit. Because it did that jingle bell, jingle bell, jingle all the way. Oh, Johnny right. wants a pair of skates, Susie wants a sleigh. You can't do the jingle bell, jingle all the way, you do the next part. Jingle bell, jingle bell, Johnny wants a pair of skates. It's after the first part, of, it's basically jingle bells and the first part missing. Can you believe that? <laughs> so.
So, okay, I guess until we, we discover the next thing. Oh! I mean, I want to, okay, this is old camp. And this is not a spring chick. And we're here yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And for more, more information, you go to www.mondaybuck.net on the net or a more commercial site, www.mbn. Uh, news news video. Video web .com, so. And wherever you're watching us, subscribe to us, follow our daily news, newscast in 3D. And thank you once for over 250 million links on the internet. And so, of course, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and pin us on Pinterest.